But there have been dreams out there of traveling even quicker. No one really likes staying in the air for that long. And it seems to be a dream that might be moving forward for whoever is the president, perhaps presidents to come here as the Air Force has taken initial steps to begin prototyping a supersonic aircraft that could transport the president in about half the time. And last month, we got the update uh, that a contract was awarded to uh, move forward, phase two contract uh, at Exosonic, a startup aerospace company that works on jets just like that, working on a low boom uh, aircraft concept here to transport the president. Very interesting. Uh, I guess it would be good, depending on what time or how that time's used. Uh, here to discuss that progress with us is the CEO of Exosonic, Norris T, joins us now. Uh, and Norris, I mean, talk to me about the tech that has to go into this to get uh, Air Force One moving at double the speed it's normal. Yeah, sounds good. So we've been building supersonic airplanes since the 1960s. So it's really no technology. But the change here is this low boom technology. So the one thing about the Concorde is that it cannot fly supersonic over land because the loud sonic booms it generated that can shake windows or buildings. And so NASA has been working on technology for 30 years and it's finally reached a state of maturity where we can actually shape this sonic boom and mute it such that it's like a south thump on the ground. And that's what we're incorporating into our aircraft. Yeah, the Concorde's a good example to point back to because it made a lot of people angry with all that noise. But now that you're doing this, I mean, obviously, it seems like this would be the starting point. You get the contract, you work on the technology. Uh, where do you look to use and leverage that uh, experience and maybe building out Air Force One as a supersonic jet? Uh, where does it go from there? Yeah, so actually, as part of this contract, we are building or designing our supersonic airliner first, right? Because we need to get this airframe that actually fits commercial purposes as well. And then similar to the existing Air Force One, which is a 747, we're gonna re-modify our aircraft such that the interior, we remove all, all the commercial seats and put in what the president or other top US leaders want in that aircraft. Which makes it seem like, I mean, even when we talk about retrofitting uh, the Boeing 747 here for that, I mean, it, it seems tough because you gotta throw a lot in there since it is the president we already talked about the armor that's additional uh, to the limousine that carries them around here. But when you think about the plane, I mean, a million dollars sounds like a lot of money. But when we're talking about Air Force One and retrofitting a, a prototype here, uh, what more needs to be added there in terms of the funds to get this from uh, concept to actual uh, vehicle to transport a president? Yeah, certainly. It's, a, it's definitely kind of a, a long road ahead with a lot of money that still needs to go in. So for this contract, it's a study contract. So we can understand, you know, what are the requirements that the president or other top U.S. leaders would want in this aircraft. And there is the opportunity for follow-on contracts or a phase three that can be worth uh, you know, 10 plus million dollars. And of course, we're also searching for venture capital to fund the development of this aircraft, the supersonic airliner version or any other military or government derivative versions of the aircraft. Yeah, it's an interesting, uh, I guess, break from the trends that we've seen in terms of business travel not being out there, a lot of people staying at home, virtual conferences here. Uh, what do you think that this technology might say to, to attract that in the future when we think about cutting travel times down by half? Yeah, for sure. So, so certainly right now is maybe not the best time to introduce this into service now, given the low traffic numbers. But when we talk about entry into service, we're thinking about the mid-2030s, and by then, you know, the pandemic will be behind us. Uh, air travel should hopefully have been rebounded by then, and we'll have a lot more travelers out there, including business and leisure. Yeah, well, no much, uh, no, no higher profile guest, I suppose, to fly around the world half the time than the president of the United States. So we'll see what happens from there. Exosonic CEO, Norris T, uh, appreciate you taking the time and good luck. Thanks, Zach.